It was only when I talked to Craig that I became extremely excited of what this adaptation might look like. We asked Nico Parker to play an incredibly challenging part. We have to fall in love with her. And she also has to be a specific kind of person, very different than the person that Joel is going to meet later in the episode in the guise of little Ellie. It was important for us to present the audience with a Sarah that we felt we could follow for the rest of the series. She's almost the protagonist until disaster strikes. Something that Nico Parker and Pedro Pascal pulled off gorgeously. Nico Parker, my original daughter, my Sarah, she is the, the person that I live for. Without her, I don't have purpose. He's the best. I could not ask for a better on-screen dad. A lot of the time with acting, you're not always seeing what you're reading and what the audience is seeing. So a lot of the time, you're kind of making up in your head, which on one hand is really amazing because you can create this whole narrative in your brain that then you get to follow through with. But on the other hand, it's like you're watching someone die and you're just staring at like a patch of grass and like, <gasps> The amazing thing about Fort McLeod is it was like you could just really immerse yourself because it's all in front of you. Like any time where I was scared, I was genuinely really scared. Dad? Oh shit! And I just remember being like, oh my god. We are not sick! So this is how it begins. It begins with tragedy. Which is ultimately the event that shapes the character for the rest of the show, for the rest of his life. It is the point of identity for Joel. That kind of love, that unconditional love, is beautiful and can be very scary at the same time. We didn't do a lot of rehearsing because I think we both kind of wanted to savor all of the passion and everything. The feeling I had after the first take of adrenaline. <laughs> the emotion there is heartbreaking and it's ugly. The way she dies is, is not pretty. It's not meant to be pretty. Her death is the fulcrum point for everything. My name is Marlene. I'm the leader of the Fireflies in the Boston QZ. I first met Marlene almost exactly 10 years ago in 2012. It was to audition for the video game. As far as the HBO series, I don't remember when I first heard about it, but when I did, I was like, mommy want that. <laughs> did I think that they would actually cast me? No, I didn't. The hundreds of people that work on the game make you look like Marlene, make you look like the character and turn it into a masterpiece. It's another thing to step in front of the camera and embody her with my own instrument. And I had a couple of things on my side, which was I grew into her, I aged into her a little bit, and I guess my deep passion and love for her. As a writer, you're trying to construct a scenario where like, a person is trying to avoid a fate worse than death. For Joel, it would be losing a daughter again, and he probably would not survive that. So then how do we put him in a situation where now he has to be with this girl and he immediately tries to reject it? You're going to do it. The hell we are. With them. We don't have time for this. Joel is a broken man, and he meets this kid. Ellie's not a big fan of Joel when she first meets him. <laughs> Their initial meeting doesn't really set them up to be the greatest of friends, but I think that's also because they're like similar personalities. They just clash, and they don't know how to relate to each other yet. In the final moments of this episode, Joel forgets that the girl that is standing behind him is not his daughter. Primitive instinct takes over. <laughs> he can't help but act. Something else took control of him in a similar way to how the cordyceps does, and except for him, it's a version of love. The most remarkable thing about that moment is that when Ellie watches him beating a man to death, she is activated. Earlier in the episode, when Sarah sees him killing this old woman who's infected, who he has to kill. You killed her. She cries. Hey, baby, I'm sorry. Ellie doesn't cry. Ellie likes it. She likes the idea of somebody defending her like that, and she likes the idea of that guy being punished. And this is where you begin to see the problem. 
but also the deliciousness of the pairing. These two are meant to be together, but look out, 